Hi, my name's John. Welcome to a review video. In this video, I'm going to be doing a review on a 5-inch machine vase. The vase was supplied to me by an import company called Vivo. I want to make one or two things perfectly clear before we get started. Vivo doing pay me to do the video. The payment I get is to keep the vase. What you're going to get here is an honest, true video, in my opinion. If the vase is good, I'll say it's good. If the vase is shite, I'll simply tell you the truth. There's no stories told here. I have got two vases already on my small milling machine, but I do go to a friend's house to borrow his Bridgeport milling machine for bigger jobs. His vase is absolutely worn out. So I thought I'll do a review on this vase and then I can give it to my friend and I can use it any time I go. That's enough talking. Let's have a look and see exactly what we'll get. Clamping down tables need to be nice and short. These are actually the ones I use on my milling machine vase because they need to be able to clear that part there when it swivels, and I think that these should be ideal. Right, so that's clamped down and that swivels basically round and round it will go. It'll spend most of its time like that, but it will be handy, I suppose, just to have a quick a quick swivel round. I like to go 45, I can use the graduations on there, and I'm sure it'll be accurate for quite a few different applications. That feels really positive, locked up, absolutely solid. There's a little bit of play in the brass nut and the wedge on there, you always get that. It's not something to be concerned about. When we take it off, we'll have a look underneath and see what adjustment there is to adjust lift on that jaw. It's lift is what you don't need, a little bit of that doesn't really matter. That's what they call the fixed jaw and that's what all the clamping gets done against. So that's your register for machining off. Right, the jaws have been hardened, that's hard steel. They're replaceable as well, that's just iron bolts holding the jaws on. Right, so I've clocked the vase in, which means I've set the vase to be at 90 degrees to the lathe bed, so that face there is running absolutely parallel. Make yeah, sure that's within a couple of thou, we can get it better than that. Yeah, it's pretty good. For the purpose of the test, that's good enough because you can play around and get that absolutely perfect. What I want to do is run the clock gauge along there and make sure that it's running actually parallel with the bed. Right, we'll run a test along the top jaw, along the fixed jaw. Just zero the, zero the clock out. About there. Five thou out. Ten thou, fifteen thou. Right, so that's twenty thou, end to end. That's where the vase mount on a swivel base. 
I'll try it on this part here and then we'll probably end up taking the vase off the swivel base and do the same sort of test on that. So that's on the actual casting as opposed to the jaw. And that's bloody good, that is, that's quite amazing actually. If I was going to use this vase on, on the base like that, I would probably skim those jaws. The jaws will have a little bit of play on whether I bolt it on. But for that, the casting is absolutely good. We'll try it on this, this part of the casting here. You can't really get much better than that, can you? So the actual body of the vase is really good. Try it that way. And that's good as well, that's absolutely quite amazing actually. Because this, this part here actually moves. And when you tighten it, you often get what they call a lift, a little bit of lift. So, up to now, I must admit I'm quite impressed. In fact, I'm very impressed. I use my table to hold it down, but you actually do get supplied with two, which aren't really a wonderful fit in my tea slots, but they would do the job. Then we'll take the top off the bottom. There's one more test I could do. clock along that face there with a vase set up in this orientation once again I'm very impressed that is probably as good as I'm going to get One thing I have noticed, it's got a channel all the way around there and all the way around there. So the coolant, if you use flood coolant, would go into there and run down into the centre of the into the centre of the machine. That's something that my vase hasn't got the cutting fluid pieces everywhere. <coughs> Nicely finished off, it's all been ground, there's no file or chisel marks. I'm very impressed. And like I say the base is really shallow. You're probably only gonna lose 40 mil. That's nice. Nicely finished off. Okay. So we'll look at the bottom of the vase. That's cut out here, cut out there, and what therefore is for pieces to go in to locate the vase onto the milling machine. I normally clamp it onto a piece of case steel in there and mill slots in myself. These little bits here, they go into there, held on with two cap heads, and they fit into there. They're actually not a bad fit in my milling machine, but I would make some that are a perfect fit, there's a little bit of slogger in there which means you can put the vase on and it's just lined up Right 
so that's how I would use the vise. I wouldn't be using the um, rotating part, rotating the uh, rotating base unless I really needed to. It's a simple matter to clock the, the vise in. You only find once it's on the machine, you just sort of leave it alone. It does pay to move it from end to end occasionally to save wearing the, the bed in one place. If you're fortunate to a big enough milling machine. Right, so now we'll put the clock on there, but I think it'll be exactly the same reading as we've got before. Yeah, it is. So those, those jaws will need machining on the vase and then it will be absolutely spot on. As you can see the vase is a little bit big for this machine, the four inch probably perfect. And they do with three inch and a four inch. Right, so we've got 20 thou there. We'll put it onto here. And we've got nothing. So that means that, that face, those two faces are parallel. The vase is good, it's, it's exceeded what I would have thought. I mean, it's not a curved vase, that is 70 quid vase. Um, I suppose it just does what it's supposed to do. I'll put a bit of metal in and we'll do a little bit of milling just to see I've used it, what it's supposed to be used for. We'll put a parallel in there and I've got a piece of key steel here, we'll just use that. I quite like the handle, I will paint it red because I, I keep losing the handles. It is just a hex, so you could put a, a socket on there and a drill I suppose if you wanted to. Right, I'll put a cutter in and we'll do a little bit of milling, but I'm sure it'll do the job perfectly all right. I mentioned earlier about this little trough here and the water running, it's absolutely perfect. Mind it dribbles off the ends, but this is containing the trough and it all runs into the, the bed like it's supposed to. That's attention to detail, that. Right, so we've used the vase, we've done one or two tests on it. It's absolutely amazing me. Uh, it's much, much better quality than I expected. Would I buy one for my workshop? Absolutely, I wouldn't hesitate. I think they're good value for money. I mean, that vase, I think it's only 70 quid and the smaller ones are actually cheaper. There is some links in the introduction box of the video that take you to the Vivo website, take you to this vase and the smaller vases. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thanks for watching.